as weak and a bitter for the admiration of the crowd. So in this statement in the American papers, the Spanish minister of the United States referred to McKinley as very weak and called him a bitter for the admiration of the crowd. What's a bitter, like you bid on a something, for the admiration of the crowd? What is a person that does that? What's he saying by, he's a bitter for the admiration of the crowd? What's that? Yeah, people pleaser, doesn't have any guts. You know, he wants to make everybody to like him. Okay, this world, everybody can't like you. Okay. And because of those statements by the Spanish minister to the United States about our American president and the American media, tension really mounted between the countries of the United States and Spain. And finally, on February 16, 1898, just one week after these statements were printed in major newspapers across the country, everything exploded between these two countries. February 16. Now, it wasn't only because of what was said in the paper. Something's going to happen on February 15, 1898, that's going to make the difference. Anybody want to guess what that's going to be? The sinking of the USS Maine. Okay? That's our next subtopic. So, this is what starts the Spanish American War, kiddos, right here. So, on February 15, 1898, There was an American battleship called the USS Maine that was stationed in Havana Harbor in Cuba. February 15, 1898, an American battleship known as the USS Maine was stationed in Havana Harbor in Cuba. Why was that battleship in Havana Harbor, do you think? We had Americans on the ground in Cuba providing assistance to those people, and we had American supplies in Cuba. And we were a little afraid that who might come in and damage either one of those? Spain. So we had this battleship in Havana Harbor to protect American citizens that were in Cuba and American assets or property that we had in Cuba. Because we were concerned that maybe Spain would come in and kill our Americans there, and take or damage our property. So the USS Maine was in there to provide protection. Well, suddenly, the morning of February 16th, the USS Maine simply exploded mysteriously. Exploded. And sank to the bottom of Havana Harbor. So early in the morning on February 16th of 18. 98, the USS Maine, American battleship, mysteriously explodes and sinks to the bottom of Havana Harbor. And when the USS Maine sank to the bottom of Havana Harbor, 260 American sailors were killed. 260 American sailors were killed. What do you think the response was back in the United States from Americans? What? Well, they absolutely no question they thought they did it. Good, good point. But what was their reaction, thinking that Spain did it? By God, we're de they were demanding war, chanting the famous line, Remember the Maine. Remember the Maine. So when news reached the United States, Americans were demanding war, people chanting in the streets, Remember the Maine. Now, before we get on to our next subtopic, which is the United States goes to war with Spain, you will, a year from today, or maybe a little bit later, I'm still working on that, but about a year from right now, you'll be in Arlington Cemetery, and you will see the only thing that survived from the USS Maine, and that was the mast. And it is in Arlington Cemetery, right across from the amphitheater, very well, very visible. You'll get a chance to see that in about a year. Okay? The mast of the USS Maine. Well, President McKinley still was not interested in war very much. And he actually was able to avoid war with Spain for almost two months after the sinking of the USS Maine. 
McKinley didn't feel like it was in the best interest of the United States to go to war with Spain, and he actually was able to avoid war with Spain for almost two months after the sinking of the USS Maine. But what finally pushed him over the top to war? Anybody want to guess? What finally made him say, yeah, we got to go to war? What the American people think about that? What they want to do? What the American people do after the sinking of Maine? Demanded war. Well, he held off for two months, but what finally got him? Public pressure. Okay? People were on his case. So finally, on April 11th of 1898, April 11th of 1898, the United States declared war on the country of Spain. On April 11th, 1898, the United States declared war on the country of Spain. Now, when they declared war, a lot of foreign countries, including maybe some of our allies, were questioning why we would do that. Why do you think foreign countries thought we declared war on Spain? Because they sank our battleship? Why do you think they thought we were being a little bit greedy? What do they think? What, what, what land did we want? Cuba. Cuba. Well, Cuba especially. So a lot of foreign countries really questioned this war on the part of the United States. There was the thought among many foreign countries that the only reason the United States had declared war on Spain was to claim Cuba for the United States. Wouldn't have that been something? Changed our history as far as the Cuban Missile Crisis if that would have been the case. You think about it. It might have been smart, actually. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Okay? Now, the United States wanted it real clear that that was not the case. That the thoughts of these foreign countries were unwarranted. And that's where a senator from Colorado by the name of Henry Teller steps into history. Okay? So because the United States does not want the impression that the only reason we're going to war with Spain was to capture Cuba, a senator from Colorado by the name of Henry Teller steps into history. And what he did is he introduced a resolution to Congress. A resolution to Congress. And this resolution that was brought up by Senator Henry Teller of Colorado goes into American history known as the Teller Amendment. The Teller Amendment. So we want to make it really clear that that was not true. We were not declaring war on Spain so we could gain access to Cuba or gain that property. And the guy that really was concerned and wanted to make that clear was Senator Henry Teller of Colorado who passed a resolution through Congress known as the Teller Amendment which stated the following two things. First of all, the resolution told everyone interested that the United States would claim no rule over Cuba. They made it real clear in the resolution that the United States would claim no rule over Cuba. The second thing the Teller Amendment stated is that once the island of Cuba was free of Spanish rule, the United States would leave the country. They would not be involved in the restructuring of what? The government. So the Teller Amendment was real clear. It was a public resolution stating to the world that the United States would claim no rule over Cuba, and once the island of Cuba was free of Spanish rule, the United States would leave the country. Pretty, pretty confident of victory, weren't we? If we put a resolution out there that states that we will claim no rule over Cuba, and once we free Cuba from Spanish rule, we'll leave. Pretty, pretty confident. Well, Congress quickly adopted the Teller Amendment because they wanted this resolution out there to ensure the fact that the United States was not going to conquer Cuba for the United States as a result of victory in this war. Okay, now, what's interesting, and we'll do this tomorrow, but I want you to listen. What's interesting is the first battles of the Spanish-American War do not occur in Cuba. 
they occur, they occur in the Philippines. And there's a reason for that. So our next subtopic for tomorrow will be battle in the Philippines, not Cuba. So the first military action of the Spanish-American War is going to occur in the Philippine Islands, far away from Cuba, not in Cuba itself. Okay? And we'll begin that thing up tomorrow. Any questions at all? All righty, we're making good progress.